Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Timothy Lee, and I'm a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. We welcome Alexandra Woodyer Sharon, CEO and President of Empress Royalty Corp. Uh, she'll speak to us about Empress's growing portfolio of royalties and streams. Alex, you have 15 minutes, and then we'll have a five minute Q&A at the end of the session. And attendees, please feel free to ask questions during the uh, using the Q&A link below. Take it away, Alex. Thank you so much, Timothy, and thanks everyone for listening. Empress Royalty, we're listed on the TSXV under the symbol EMPR. We offer a strategic approach to investing in gold and silver. Here are the forward-looking statements also available on our website, so I encourage you to have a look there as I will be making forward-looking statements throughout the presentation. Empress Royalty, the creation. Empress creates new royalties and or streams to get mines into production or to help mines increase their production capacity. We currently have a diversified portfolio of 17 investments exclusive to precious metals focused on quality over quantity. We're currently generating revenue and forecasting with our near-term catalyst over $28 million US of revenue over the next three years. We have a strong mining finance team with over 200 years experience completed over $6 billion in mining finance transactions. And we're on the path to rapid growth. We've got a strong portfolio, a robust pipeline, and looking at over $75 million of potential investments. What are royalties and streams? So a royalty agreement is where we invest in a mining company and we receive a percentage of revenue from production. A stream is where we invest in a company, we provide an investment, and then we are able to buy gold or silver at a discounted price. At Empress, we do a combination of royalties and or streams, depending on each unique situation as we find the financing opportunities. The investment benefits. For an Empress shareholder, you're getting leverage to the gold and silver price. You're getting access to a globally diversified portfolio of assets and limited exposure to capital and operating costs compared to typical mining companies. For a mining company partner, you're getting non-dilutive, highly competitive cost of capital. We're able to provide providing provide needed upfront capital by immediately monetizing part of your future production. And it's much more flexible and less restrictive than typical bank financing. There, we view that there's three types of royalty in streaming companies, especially in the junior side of the market. There's the expiration generation, the prospect generators, early stage, typically inexpensive to acquire, but there's the expiration risk. And if it does turn into a mine, there's a long lead time to revenue generation. Then there's the royalty trading acquisition companies, third-party royalty acquisitions. The royalty is already in place, so it's a simple acquisition, but it's become a crowded marketplace, typically paying a premium and part of a competing bid process. There's also no direct relationship with the mining company or opportunity to negotiate that contract. At Empress, we're focused on the third side, the third type, which is a creation and origination. We work with mining companies to create new royalties or streams, and we have a direct relationship with that mining company. We create flexible structures to work the goals of all parties, and we're able to focus our investments on producing assets, which brings revenue and creates value for our shareholders. Royalty company growth. We've got two charts here. The first one is looking at how royalty companies outperform the gold price and the gold miners ETF over the last 10 years. And the second one, we're looking at the life cycle of a royalty company. Empress, we're in stage one. Um, you know, we just listed just over a year ago. Um, we're establishing market presence, but we believe with our existing portfolio of revenue generating assets, our investment strategy, and the team that we have together, we should be able to quickly accelerate into stage two rapid growth. Uh, our investment manager and our partner is Endeavor Financial, also a large shareholder in Empress. David Rhodes is the managing director of Endeavor Financial, is also our executive chairman and chair of our investment committee. This gives us access to uh, not only be able to a cash flow modelists, financial analysts, mining engineers, geologists, but allows us to quickly vet deals, structure them, and negotiate transactions. When we look at our investment focus and criteria, we look at it from six directions. Firstly, we look at the project stage. We are looking at development and production stage projects, again, to get mines into production or to help them expand their capacity. We look at small to mid-tier size companies, both public and private. And when it comes to commodity, we are only looking at gold and silver. So we truly are a pure precious metals royalty and streaming company. Globally, as what we're looking for locations, we currently have investments in Mexico, Peru, and Mozambique. We're looking for further investments in South America, Africa, and Australasia. 
Our investment size is anywhere from half a million to 25 million is what we're mandated. For us right now is that two to five, sorry, two to $10 million investment. And all of our investments have a strong ESG focus. Moving into our portfolio, we have one producing asset, three development assets, two of which should be in production by the end of Q2, and 13 exploration assets. Our producing asset, uh, current producing asset, is the Sarah Antipite stream. This mine uh, was started by Buena Ventura in 2002, purchased by the Sierra Sun Group, a private group, in 2016, and it's produced over a million ounces to date. This $10 million investment from us, allowing them to increase their production from 750 tons to 1,000 tons per day. We structure this as a gold stream, so we have 4.5% of their gold, up to 11,000 ounces, and then it drops to a 1% life of mine stream going forward. Annual cash flow to Empress is about $2.2 million US, and the NAV in this is $14.9 million. Um, important to note, throughout the presentation, we're using 5% discount, um, $17.50 gold, and $21 silver as our base case. Uh, we also have the Talawetto Silver Stream, which is owned by Altalay Mining, also listed in the TSXV, in Durango, Mexico. This project's in construction, about 95% built, and forecasting production towards the end of this quarter, beginning of next. The investment size for us was $5 million, which gives us 100% of their silver, up to 1.25 million ounces. The annual cash flow is about $3 million to Empress. The NAV is 24, or an 8 million US, and the IRR is 79%. Uh, the next is our project in Mozambique called Manica, and we have a gold royalty on this project owned by MMP. It's also in construction and forecasting production in Q2 this year. Uh, the investment size of $3 million, we've increased that to 3 million, and that gives us a 3.37 um, 5% royalty on the project. There's currently a three-year three -year mine life plan, but we expect additional upside from satellite deposits. The annual cash flow is a million and a half US to Empress. The NAV is 5.6 million IRR, just over 38%. We also have the development stage project owned by Candelaria um, in Zacatecas, Mexico. The Penis project, um, we have a 1% royalty across the entire project. There's currently a seven-year mine life plan potential mine life expansion. Um, Candelaria just received the drilling permits and a drilling program is ongoing there at the moment. Um, so we expect this one to get a lot more interesting as it's further drilled out. We have the Canadian exploration portfolio of 13 early stage gold projects across Canada. Um, fantastic to have in our portfolio, but we're much more focused on revenue, which brings me to our projected revenue over the next three years. Some parameters around this, 1750 gold, $21 silver, 5% discount. And this is with Manica and uh, Talawea getting into production and Sierra and Tepite increasing their production. We're looking at over $5 million in 2022 US, 9.3 in 2023, and over 12 million in 2024. We have invested $19.5 million US to date. Our net asset value is 47 million and our market cap in US dollars is about $26 million. We're trading a significant discount on all key metrics. Here we look at the industry as well as some of the other junior companies in the royalty space. The average PNAV ratio is uh, 1.3. And then you know, if you look at where we're trading on that, we're at about 0.58 times. And that's just on the base case. Uh, the people behind Empress, David Rhodes, um, is the Managing Director of Endeavor, also our Executive Chairman and Investment Committee Chair. Myself and Jeremy Bond from Terra Capital are also on the Investment Committee. Paul Mainwaring is a CFA from London. Wes Roberts, a mining engineer from Toronto. Natasha Kieran, a corporate finance lawyer. And uh, David Wang, a technical advisor with 30 years of experience in mining engineer. Um, I'm based here in Vancouver with Caitlin, who's our VP of Marketing, and Rich is based in New York. He's our Global Vice President, who helps the origination and execution of our investments. Moving on to our capital structure, we roughly have 100 million shares outstanding, market cap about $33 million Canadian at current prices. We've got a million dollars cash, we've got debt of 4.8. Um, that was a debt facility, a $15 million accordion facility we put in place with Nabari at the end of December. Um, and we've drawn down about four, just over four and a half of that now uh, with another $10 million available to us to expand our portfolio. 
We have research coverage from uh, Red Cloud, uh, David Helbert, and Adam at Research Capital. When you look at our shareholder makeup, we have roughly a third with strategic partners, management and board, a third with institutional investors, and a third in the public float. Near-term capitalists, catalysts, a lot happening for Empress um, coming up. Sarah Antipite will be expanding its production from 750 tons to 1,000 tons per day, increasing our revenue. Then we have Talawetto, um, which is getting into production at the end of this quarter, um, and then Manica. So again, that'll be increasing our revenue, projecting over $28 million over the next three years US. And we're continuing to expand our portfolio, where I've got term sheets on a couple opportunities at the moment, um, and continue to look to build out our portfolio. The investment case. Current portfolio, 17 investments in gold and silver royalties and streams with a robust pipeline, forecasting $28 million over the next three years US. We've got a net asset value of $47 million. Our IRR cumulative in the portfolio is just under 36%, and we're trading a discount with a $26 million US market cap. Thank you so much. For listening. Great. Thank you very much for the uh, informative presentation, Alex. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we will now move into the, the Q&A session of the, of the uh, presentation. Um, one quick question, uh, looking at the, the mix of projects in your portfolio, are you um, looking to continue to be focused on gold and silver or would you look to, at expanding into base metals? Empress truly is a precious metals royalty and streaming company. So we are only looking at bringing gold and silver investments into the portfolio. You know, there are some examples with, with Sarah and Tepite where it's a gold mine and that's what we're taking the stream on. There's other ones with like Talawet, which is more of a gold mine and has other uh, minerals in there where we did a silver, which is more of a byproduct for them. So we can do a combination of both, but in terms of where we're investing our dollars and what we're getting back in, that'll be gold and silver. Sure. And would you look to expand further on the streaming side into some polymetallic projects that are out there that, that maybe have a silver or gold stream? Yeah, absolutely. We are looking at a couple of those opportunities right now. So uh, definitely not just limited to either being a pure gold mine or pure silver mine polymetallic work. Again, it comes down to the economics and what the growth plans are for these companies. Um, you know, we're finding a lot of opportunity with public companies, but also private companies that don't have access to the capital markets and we're able to provide this funding for them. Great. Um, and are there uh, geographic, are there other jurisdictions or geographic preferences or, or you know, obviously you have projects uh, in Africa and South America and so on. So you perhaps have a global focus. We do very much have a global focus. Um, we're you know, actively looking in, in globally, South America and Africa, the deals we're looking at right now. I uh, would love something in Australasia. We haven't found the right fit for us there. Um, and that's where we're able to see the great returns is in those kind of environments and those, those mining friendly jurisdictions that we're going into. Great. And uh, looking forward, um, obviously you've given kind of the revenue projections and so on, but what, what else might we, might we look forward to from the company in, uh, in 2022? You know, again, the near-term catalyst for us are our current investment expanding production with, with Sarah and Tepite, Talawetto and Manica getting into production and that revenue starting to come into Empress. We took this company from a year ago of roughly 13 exploration assets. We've layered in the pre-development, the one producing asset. So we really are looking to build the, the portfolio out. We have access to the debt facility to do so. We've got revenue coming in that we can redeploy. So we really, we're looking to really build this out and hopefully announce some new investments in the coming months. Um, we also go through a very rigorous process and due diligence and, and what we look at when we put these investments together, not only from what we structuring the terms and everything else, but we do third party due diligence. So we really try to de-risk any investment we're making. And sometimes it takes a bit of time to do, but we're very comfortable with the investments we've made to date and some of the exciting ones that we're looking at at the moment. Great. And you had mentioned the ESG uh, side of things. What criteria do you use or what approach do you use to evaluate the, the ESG side of an investment that, or potential investment that you would make? 
So all of our partners that we've invested in today and the ones we're looking to invest have very strong ESG policies. Um, and we go through a, a very strict checklist as we do our due diligence, having a third party look at that. Um, we're in the process now. We've got an ESG committee at the board level and we'll be announcing soon some, some of the policies we're putting into place and some of the appointments we're making. So it's very true to what we do. And um, you know, not only is it just from an environmental and governance perspective, but some of the social programs that our companies are doing are just outstanding. And I look forward for them sharing and us being able to share that as well in the near future. Great. And other aspects, obviously you are an investor in the sense of, you know, in these projects with, with the royalty or stream, but do you also get involved with any advising or um, uh, kind of managerial, any of your managerial expertise uh, in with the companies that, that you're working with? Yeah, I mean, we are a true precious metals royalty and streaming company. So we invest in the companies um, and take our streamer royalty at the end. But we work, we do work very closely with the management groups. We have weekly calls as they're getting into construction or expanding. So we are very hands on with these groups, monthly reporting. So we know what's going on and we do have very good dialogue with them. But in terms of our official capacity, we are totally just as an investor as a royalty and streaming company. Great. Great. Well, unless I think that wraps up the, the questions that we have, uh, unless there are any other questions. Um, Alex, uh, I'd like to thank you again very much for presenting Empress to us today. And thank you everyone out there for your time and attention and, and for tuning in today as well. No, thank you so much for hosting us and thank you everyone for listening. And please reach out through our email here or website if you have any further questions, we'd love to answer them. Great.